It's a wonderful meeting. To meet all the leaders in the AOM field. And I've met old friends that I knew from ISO and WHO. Good morning. This is the last day of our four-day integrative medicine week. So our local schools, do you know how many local schools in the area county? We have a 13 accredited acupuncture school. UCLA is here, number six, very close. So that's why we should work together. Chinese medicine, by virtue of its uh, focus on improving people's uh, health and ability to handle stress, all of these non-communicable diseases can be prevented. Heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine can help you with that. This type of perspective is holistic. And that's what, what patients are looking for. They're looking to address not just their body as a machine, but their mind and their spirit as well. recent years, the demand of the need of the traditional medicine actually increased more and more member states of WHO realized the importance of traditional medicine. Uh, you can see the regulation side, the advertising and the herbal products and providers, uh, that's regulation mechanisms, still uh, a challenge to some countries. The industry the strategy are three objectives. Under each object, there are two directions based on the six core functions of WHO. Chinese medicine has great potential for American healthcare. There are definitely opportunities uh, in the public health and health system uh, in the United States. At the California Acupuncture Board, we have a team of almost 20 staff members. So needless to say, on the narrow task with which we are charged, there is a lot of work to be done in the usual course of business and a lot of work to also be done to improve the processes we already have in place. When we talk about where we are, the California Golden State, I think about the original charge of the symposium. Dr. Zung convened this symposium to discuss the potential for Chinese medicine in the United States healthcare system. We have continued work to do that the board values stakeholder input and we hope our stakeholders have ongoing and robust dialogue with us. Who is actually using a complementary alternative medicine in LA? It's an interesting question, which we did an online survey of the LA County residents. How do we actually look at the outcomes of integrated practice in such a way where we can look at it from a combined approach? And so again, this is just to give you a picture, a kind of a graphic on how we're thinking about the global view. I want you to think about, we need a slogan or a motto for this medicine. Whether you practice this medicine in China, whether you practice in New York, whether you practice in Europe, or whether you practice in California. Silence is not golden. We have to begin to open up and talk about our medicine. We have to know what to talk about. I believe in one-to-one -one communication, reaching out and touching. We have the education program, about 60% of Chinese medicine training, and 10% of the biomedical training, and 10% of the common core course training. So the total of years is six years. It's much longer than <laughs> most of the school, even longer than China. I think what I want to talk about is the future direction for TCM education. We know we look at some kind of um, standardized competency-based learning. We deliver patient-focused integrated healthcare and we provide student-centered interprofessional education. So we have our particular three programs here and, uh, and soon to be brought in either physical therapy or doctor naturopathic medicine. We have a core curriculum and what we do is we integrate with that core curriculum. That there is um, a lot of movement toward having much greater consistency and a big part of the context that I want us to understand that is there was a, a RAND report, 2015, complementary alternative medicine, profession or modality. Tier one universities like UCLA need to develop and improve protocols for acupuncture research. 
We need reimbursement for all acupuncture services, and not just for pain, and inclusion in Medicaid. And we need to expand programs in the VA for acupuncture for our veterans. You know, here at UCLA, this is what we've been doing for the last 20 plus years. Um, you know, we are trying to bring Chinese medicine, trying to bring integrative medicine into uh, conventional biomedicine, and we are treatment uh, program is going to be delivered by a team-based approach. Emphasize self-care and personal responsibility. We empower patients as healing partners. We don't take that away from them. And we use all the modalities, including health and life coaching, which is where the spirit comes in. Work in the hospital, and uh, this is the process. And uh, generally speaking, you have to have a uh, privilege to apply privilege. And the different hospitals have different requirements. Some hospitals easier than other. And uh, after you everything uh, credential they checked, you got to appointment, and you start able to work here. Before you work there, and they, then you have to got all kind of training, different kind of training because hospital have dif different requirement. It's this is a general timeline. It's certainly not extensive, but it's a perspective of how I saw the development. 2001 was when Battlefield Acupuncture developed. And then in March of 2011, that was the deadline in which this act needs to be implemented. And then we've come to January of 2016, the UCLA uh, program with Operation Men is an intensive treatment program for service members, veterans, their fa and their families as well. Um, so these are just some of the things that I'm hoping to do a little bit more of. Uh, we're going to be opening an acupuncture clinic for assistance with tobacco cessation. Uh, we are working on, like I said, an agreement with Emperor's College to be able to come and, again, do acupuncture for pain management. Um, we're working with Loyola Marymount Yoga Studies Program to bring um, therapeutic yoga. We had this herbal medicine summit yesterday. We discussed clinical practice models, uh, policy, regulation of integrative medicine. We discussed educational systems for patients and providers. I applaud each one of you. Spend your time to uh, pursue a career in integrated medicine. And, uh, and I think the future is very bright because the world would need this type of medicine to be helpful to even transform the current system. I am now confident uh, some of the uh, collaborations could start to work between WHO and UCLA, particularly the East West Center. Yeah. We should make a bridge between Shanghai and Los Angeles, between UCLA and the Shanghai University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. And the most important thing is to collaborate. Continue to do what you do, upgrade your skills, work along with other professionals. So staying engaged, staying informed, and continuing to have enthusiasm about the growth. People in the United States are ready for a change. They're ready for Chinese medicine. Hopefully move forward to build a academic collaborative, at least uh, for the local schools within the LA County area.